So just wanted to do a quick video. Um, I've just come back from Europe on a trip that was called the pilgrimage, uh, the three peaks of Europe. So very quickly, we did two and a half thousand miles. I did it on my Royal Enfield Himalayan Scram. Um, did Spain, Andorra, France, Italy, Switzerland, back into France and back to the UK. Did the Picos Mountains, the Pyrenees and the Alps. It's a great trip, two and a half thousand miles. So very quickly, what kit did I take? Uh, did I spend loads of money? It was it venture kit. Do you need to buy all this kit? Anyway, um, so quick rundown on what I took. I took my bike. It's a Royal Enfield Himalayan Scram 411. It's a year old. It's now 5,000 miles. It was only two and a half when I took it. Um, very quickly, uh, some people already know this. I did some mods to it when it had 300 miles on it, um, which was, it's got stage two mods. So it's got the tech cam, it's got the DNA air filter um, and the free flow um, cover for that. Um, and it's got, on the other side, it's got Delkovic, full Delkovic system on there. Yeah, so um, that's the engine mods I did. I also put a fuel X management on it, just the basic one to help it not run lean. Um, so I've done that to the bike. I put a bash guard on there from SW Motec, which also covers the exhaust. We'll look at that separately another time. Um, a little um, screen, uh, which I think adds not only to the looks, but also does throw the wind up um, over you a little bit. Um, certainly keeps it, you know, off the dash and the clocks. Decent bark busters um, for dropping it and also off the wind. We've got some shorty adjustable levers. I've got Oxford heated grips. Um, that's basically the bits I had done already. So what kit did I take with me on this trip? We'll start while we're on the handlebars um, with the GoPro mount, which um, uh, holds my Insta360 camera. So I've got loads and loads and loads of footage that we're going to put on YouTube once I can sort through it, which should be amazing. Um, I bought a phone mount. I looked at lots of phone mounts, including the quad lock. This is a quad lock copy, which I got off of eBay. It has the vibration damper that I bought separately. But again, it was the copy. I mean, the whole thing cost me about 18 quid instead of whatever, 80 quid. So that has been perfect and worked well. Um, I put a twin USB charger with a voltmeter. The only thing with this one is you have to remember to turn it off. It doesn't, it's not linked to the ignition. I suppose you could put it on the ignition, but it's not. It's got fuse in line, it comes with it and everything else. Again, that was, I don't know, 15, 18 pounds. Fitted that the day before I went because my original one only has one, which is down here. Um, and I needed two charging points. So that's what I put on two days before, or the day before I went. Give you tank bag. Everyone's probably seen these on Amazon and eBay. They're cheap, 24 quid or whatever they are. It's great. It's not waterproof. Um, in here, I keep a cloth and uh, some helmet cleaner and some lip chap. Um, really important, riding through rural France, there's lots of bugs. Um, you need to be able to clean your visor as you're riding, I found, unless you have a big screen on the bike, which is gonna throw over the no route. Um, there is a kind of a phone or map pocket here, but as you see, when it gets wet, it doesn't uh, bode well, yeah. Inside, uh, disc lock, spare glasses, bits and pieces um, in there. A couple of snacks usually as well. So that's a magnetic fin. Fits on the tank and has a little strap that goes around the headstock. Absolutely brilliant bit of kit for that money. I don't need a tank bag bigger than that. I'm not carrying luggage in it. I just want a few essentials in it. So actual luggage. So the actual luggage I went for, which I, I've had pre previously, but it was what I took on this kit, this trip rather, was the Rhino Walk saddlebags. If anyone knows the Himalayan knows it has quite a high uh, rake on the exhaust. Um, you know, you can put hard panniers on there, but um, I was going to do a little bit of off-roading. Don't like hard panniers for off-roading. So I've gone for these. They're about 120 quid. I've used them now. Oops, I've probably done... They've probably done, I don't know, 4,000 miles on the bike. They are a roll top waterproof bag that has four fastenings. 
Um, I've only got two done up, there's another two. Roll top, so it's completely waterproof. Um, uh, top entry. Now the funny thing with these bags is they're a bit boot shaped, if you see that, which means packing them is a bit of a, an art. In, you get used to it. They fix to the bike, they they just throw over and they're all adjustable. And then they have a strap, a strap down here, which goes through and part of your bike and a strap at the back, which pulls tight. You will find that you do need to pull them straps and tighten them every now and then because they start sagging and adjust everything up. Stuff stretches when it rains, when it gets hot, the vibration of the bike. So, you know, when you stop for lunch, you just check all the baggage, which I would do anyway. On top here, I carried a 30 litre uh, Rhino walk bag. Um, this is from their previous range, so it's not the 100% waterproof one, submersible one that they now make. It's the previous range, but it has a waterproof liner. It also has um, a document pocket, which is waterproof on top, which I had my documents in, V5, and all the other stuff you have to carry for Europe. Um, so this is the bag I had my clothes in. This has four fixing points. Okay, here, 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 and here, which fasten down to whatever you're putting them on the bike. It would go to the seat. I happen to have it on a Hitchcock's rack. Um, and then they cinch down nice and tight. It is a roll top bag, um, which rolls up uh, and keeps the water out as well. I had no water getting at all, and it was torrential at some points in the Alps. Um, so it's a great bag, that was 30 liters. That is what carried my clothes. Um, you see there's a mesh pocket on the back. There are other fixing loops and things on the bag. So they're not dear, it's a great, great bit of kit. Um, so that leaves the panniers. The throw over panniers, like I say, I had that on a big Hitchcock's rack, um, which is brilliant. Really, really good bit of kit. It's really solid. Um, if you're riding off road, it is a really handy thing to help you lift the bike because it's not really anywhere to lift the bike. Um, I know it does have a little grab rail, but this thing is, it's, it's awesome. Um, and you can carry quite a lot of luggage on it, whatever you want. So I, recommend, I do highly recommend that on the scram. So the other bags were these throwover bags, about 120 quid each. Um, so what did I have in them? Well, this one uh, on the right, I had some spare straps, some camera equipment in a, in a walkproof bag. I also had another Rhino walk bag. This one's a 20 litre. Now that was my grab bag for the ferry. Um, so I had some essentials, change of clothes and stuff for the ferry to Santander because it's overnight um, and I didn't want to take all the kit off the bike so I just had a grab bag in my pannier um, and then I had a spare jacket in there uh, and a few other bits and pieces which aren't in there now I also put, had my trainers in there so I had a change of shoes handy uh, without unpacking all the bag um, that was that right hand one left hand one um, I had in there winter gloves, well, they're kind of year round, all season gloves, really. Just RST gloves um, with high cuffs, waterproof. Needed them, had to change them when I went to the Alps because it was cold, foggy, and uh, very, very wet. I had a pair of off road gloves, which I used in Andorra, um, vented, lightweight. I had my high vis, which in Europe, you must have uh, for if you break down it also is a um it's a waterproof jacket i've just got it in mountain warehouse nothing special none of this uh you know it's not a 500 pound jacket it's to put over the top of my motorbike jacket when it starts raining when it starts raining it usually gets dark as well so high vis makes sense to me just ordinary Berghaus walking waterproof trousers the ones that undo all the way to the top so you can put them over your boots Again, just a walking shop, not expensive motorbike gear. What else? So, in there, that is another Rhino walk bag. That's a 10 litre bag. Um, that's usually my tail pack. So that sits on my rack um, for if I'm going laning, off-roading. Um, but obviously, for this trip, it was in my pannier. I had a bike lock, which I didn't use. And I had 
thermal linings for my normal bike gear in case it got cold. I didn't use them, I just used a, a jumper. I wouldn't take them again, to be honest. They just took up room. So that's kind of it for the baggage. Oh, one more bag, one more bag, which I found, find essential. And that is my backpack. Now I use, I use this little backpack, which is the X Mudder Pro 16 liter. Um, it's, it was cheap. It carries my water bladder, um, my essentials, uh, passport, phone charger, um, driving license and, and wallet and bits and pieces. It has a really good clasp system, um, which is just on the front here. Um, mesh lining, um, it's, it's, it's brilliant. I wear it all the time, I wear it on road, off road, everything. It's from 24MX and they're not dear. It's not too big, but you get all your essentials in there. You can put, when you stop and you get your packed lunch, you put that in there, you've got your water, you've got everything in there. I did actually to everyone's, uh, well not everyone's amusement, but to some amusement, leave it in a bar the night before getting on the ferry back home with my passport and all my stuff in it. Luckily, they, uh, the lady behind the bar had, had put it behind the bar for me and I, and I got it back. So that was good. Um, a pair of my normal riding gloves is my summer gloves. They're leather wise, um, really nice gloves them sort of retro. My showy Glamster helmet, which is beautiful to wear. It is so light, such a small, um, such a small helmet casing for the size of helmet. Um, pin lock, everything else, of course. Um, and I, my Cardo Pack Talk Edge, which I wouldn't be without now. That is uh, voice activated, um, and it. Uh, I can listen to my music, I can ask for the next track, I can say volume up, volume down, um, I can obviously listen to Google Maps, which is really important, so I wouldn't go without that. So basically that's it. That was the kit that I took with me. Um, there's not a lot, and I could have gone with less. There's not a lot of money spent there. So adventure motorcycling doesn't have to break the bank, yeah? I mean, that was two and a half thousand miles in two weeks. Went to the top of Andorra off-road. Did the Picos, the Pyrenees, the Alps. Did everything. We went through every weather. Um, and that was the kit I brought. That didn't cost a lot of money. So you don't need to spend thousands on kit. Okay. How long it all lasts, I don't know. But I'm sure you can buy it again and again and again for the price of some of the deer kit. Um, so boots I wore were my former... Terra Evo boots, which I absolutely love. They are articulated, they have a hinge on the ankle. Um, they're very comfortable and they're waterproof. Um, I tried on 20 pairs of boots before I bought them. Um, every, everyone's different, everyone's gonna like a different boot. But I wanted, I wanted high protection on the road. These are my on-road boots, high protection uh, and light trails. I'll do you know gravel tracks with them. Um, but they're, they're, they're my on-road boots, but they offer great protection, they're warm, they're waterproof, and um, they, um, yeah, they're, they're just good boots. Off-road, if I'm going off-road proper, I, I would wear my cities. I've got a pair of cities for that, uh, which are stiffer and offer a bit more protection, but these are very, very good boots. Um, trousers, I just had these Reishas, uh, which I wear all the time. They weren't dear, and they're brilliant. They're not waterproof, but they are water resistant to a degree. Um, they will keep out, you know, showers and stuff. Um, and then heavy rain, I'll just put my waterproofs on. And my jacket, my jacket I wear all the time, which is the Fur, I don't know how to say it, Furigan, yeah? Um, which is a kind of a classic jacket. It is uh, a wax cotton jacket, short, reminiscent of the 50s really, I suppose. Um, yeah great jacket and that's what i wear it's a thermal liner for both of these i never put them on and, you know in england yes I, I i have worn them in the winter um but on this trip didn't need them so there you go so that's it that's the bike that's the kit if you if you did follow us on facebook um i hope you enjoyed it i uh, hope you enjoyed the trip there will be others and i will try and get some footage up on youtube as soon as i can got tons and tons and tons of it to go through so uh, there's some real treats there so anyway 
thanks for watching don't spend a fortune on motorbike kit unless you have a fortune to spend and then you don't care so but you can go motorcycling on a five grand four grand motorcycle even less um, with you know hundreds rather than thousands of pounds worth of kit and you can go and travel across Europe across the world whatever you want to do all right have a safe ride take care